everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms. Coming at you guys today with a video all about expensive AR type rifles. Why? Because, well, I, I like them, so let's just talk about it. Let's talk about the top five over $1,000 AR-15s that you can buy. And let's just go ahead and start off with an expensive freaking rifle. Knight's Armament. Knight's Armament, guys, has been around since the 1980s, making military-type firearms and have been contracted by the United States military pretty much since their introduction into the firearms world. Knight's Armament has been making the SR-25 suppressors. They've even made optics. They've made all sorts of rifles that are still in use today by the United States military. And they didn't stop making high-quality stuff with the SR-15. Now, we recently actually gave one of these away with a Fostec Echo Trigger in it, and it performed flawlessly, guys. And this thing just shoots so well. And if you are looking to just really flex on anybody out there, if you say you have a knight, so it's like, okay, good to go. We're not talking to you anymore. But anyway, Knight's Armament, guys, like I said, it's been around for quite a while. Uh, one of the older manufacturers we'll talk about and uh, they've just been making high quality stuff. So if you are in the market for a high quality AR, SR-15 is where it's at. It does come with its own Knight's iron sights that you see here. We've got the EOTech magnifier and holographic on there because quite frankly, I like the way it looks a lot. So do it on there. But it's also cool, the other little neat things that they uh, include, Magpul stock, Magpul grip, also to the Magpul handrail up here, which has a really nice aggressive uh, stippling to it and texture, so I'm definitely a fan of that. M-Lock rail as well, guys. The SR-15 is a all-around fantastic rifle. I really enjoy shooting these, and uh, <laughs> magnifier doesn't work when you have the iron sight flipped up. But uh, yeah, all in all, this thing's great. All right, expensive, as everything we're about to talk about is. But we did a uh, more affordable ARs, figured we'd go in the opposite direction on here. All right, so yeah, check out Knight's Armament. Like I said, military contracts for decades now, and they're still producing all sorts of cool stuff. Now, talk about military contracts. Uh, we've got another one over here, BCM, Bravo Company Manufacturing. has been around, oh, since shortly after Operation Iraqi Freedom, 2003, I believe, and it was founded by a United States Marine veteran, Semper Fi, raw devil dog, ain't that right, kill? And this thing is awesome guys. BCM, what I like about them is that they contract a lot of people that have actually, you know, done the work to start putting that type of innovation into their manufacturing. Like Travis Haley is one who came out with their BCM gunfighter stock. And this thing is sweet, really locks into place. It's not going to move on you if you don't want it to. And it just locks right in there. So again, it's just the also to the, the star, I, I don't understand the whole star thing that pattern that they got going on, but it's cool. I dig it. You know, whatever. BCM's cool. So BCM, like I said, 2003, they've been around and just making all sorts of high-end type firearms uh, for, or I, I guess I'm not going to say extremely high-end because the things are rugged. They're designed to work. They're all, all of these guns we're talking about today are working guns. And what I mean by that is they're not just pretty little toys, right? These things are made to get dirty, made to shoot, made to run in some of the most adverse conditions there are. And that's kind of got me excited to talk about them, right? And BCM, I think is probably one of the epitome of that. And like I said, there's not really anything like super fancy about this rifle, but when you hold it, when you fill it, it just is a lightweight platform. Uh, the, <laughs> it's got a key mod rail. RIP, but uh, you know, it's a lightweight platform that just shoots and shoots and shoots well. And they've got a lot of great minds in the tactical community that co that collaborate and come together to make pretty much everything that you see here for the masses, for, you know, citizens, for contractors, for anybody that needs a good working gun, right? At BCM, BCM's where it's at, all right? So check them out. I think uh, you guys would not be disappointed. Uh, of course, everybody knows Travis Haley is uh, Grand Thumb's dad, so we all know that both of those guys will be happy we're talking about their products today. All right. Next one I want to talk about with a name like Land Warfare, Land Warfare Research Corporation International. They better be making some cool stuff, and boy howdy, do they. LWRCI has been making rifles for quite some time now. Uh, I want to say about 2000s somewhere in there 
and uh, or 1999 actually. 1999 is when I want to say LWRCI came about, and they have been just all up in the field of uh, law enforcement, uh, Department of Defense contracts, things like that, making piston-driven systems, which are probably some of the best piston guns out there, which we will talk about another one here that might compete with that. But uh, this one here is actually one of their DI guns because I'm trying to keep everything mostly AR-15 except for the last one we're going to talk about that's going to be piston driven. But hey, LWRCI does make a lot of cool piston driven guns. They also make the SMG-45, which we have given away, which is pretty much a takeoff on the uh, HK UMP. And if you're not too familiar with what that is, that little sub gun, educate yourself. That thing is sweet. But LWRCI took it and made it better, in my mind. Now, a lot of you HK fanboys out there might completely disagree with that, but I don't care. So anyway, also to M-Lock rail on this guy here, again, a nice lightweight platform that's just gonna be a great duty rifle. And also LWRCI is noted for this twisted fluted barrel, and I really love the way it looks. Now, there's also multiple reasons for doing that. Is it more expensive to do? Yes, and uh, you'll, you'll see that reflected in the price tag. But whenever you shave metal, going in a fashion that's rotating like this it's you're not weakening just certain points of it right you're retaining the strength of the barrel going all the way around but you're also cutting those cuts are also helping with heat mitigation right so as the barrel heats up because you have these cool these little grooves that air can get into it's going to also help it cool down all right so pretty neat stuff this one i've got outfitted with my vortex viper uh, pst little uh scope mount on it uh, by Burris, a little pepper mount, and also an angled foregrip because this guy feels really good to uh, get that grip, get that nice little C-clamp way on out there, just like this here. Maybe extend the stock one more click there. Boom, that feels like one of the most comfortable platforms to absolutely shoot, and I love it. But this one's pretty set up, set up pretty simply, guys. LPVO, angled foregrip, ready to rock and roll. Lancer mag because Lancer mags are cool, all right? But like I said, Land Warfare Research Corporation International coming at you guys with all sorts of neat guns. They also make the Reaper, the, uh, what is it, rapid, uh, rapid Engagement Precision Rifle, I think it is. We've given away a couple of those now, and uh, they're just, forgive me, they're sexy, all right? They're sexy rifles, and you guys should definitely check them out. Next brand I wanna talk about, you guys already know, is one of my personal favorites, Daniel Defense. I've got their Mark 18 right here. They've been around since 2009. Marty Daniel, who started the company, actually uh, <laughs> failed out of his college twice uh, before coming back and running the show over there. And I mean that pretty much literally. He's also sitting on like their board of directors and everything. They also started off as a overhead door and fireplace company. And now they make some of the most, I probably say probably the most popular uh, military firearms there are and uh, some that have definitely got a following like the mark 18 that you see right here uh, again we already talked about grand thumb ones once he does love running his mark 18 as you guys have probably seen in his videos uh, lucas bakken t-rex arms you know those guys they run their mark 18s and they are the ones that kind of inspired me when i bought this guy back about six years ago or so uh, to get my Mark 18. I was like, man, those guys are you know, pretty cool. They're uh, they're running the Mark 18, and I saw it, and I was like, Daniel Defense. I don't know anything about them. Why would somebody just name their rifle Daniel? It doesn't make sense. And now um, I'm happy that this was actually my first NFA purchase, because well, I want to say several thousand rounds later, suppressed, unsuppressed, no matter what, this thing has never failed me. That wasn't uh, magazine related or ammo related. The the rifle itself has not failed me. Now. For those of you that don't know, I'm just going to keep this real short. This is a short-barreled rifle. I uh, do have a Surefire uh, SOCOM 556 suppressor on it. The barrel on it's about a 10.3, 10.5 inch barrel. And anything that's less than 16 inches, it's either a pistol, a, any other weapon, or a short-barreled rifle, depending on how it's manufactured or designated. So if you guys want more information on that, you know, definitely study up to your, on the laws and just know the NFA sucks. Now, something else I want to pick out Let's go on a quick little rant. I want to say that notice the timeline of a lot of these firearms that we're talking about, um, that we're starting to see this type of innovation relatively recently. Uh, we had the entire violent crime bill that was passed, the assault weapons ban of 2000, or excuse me, 1994, that pretty much expired in 2004. And then all of a sudden we get all these cool stuff that comes in and it really just halted innovation and production of AR style rifles and magazines even. I mean, magazines like, like this 
were going for like a hundred bucks when I was a kid, right? I mean, it makes no sense to me whatsoever, but long story short, let's, let's just not do that again, all right? So anyway, go out there, get educated on your local laws and everything else. And uh, let's talk about Let's talk about a few others, but uh, let's talk about one one last one that I really think is probably going to set this off. It may be number one, and it's going to really just kind of demolish everything else because it's piston driven. And the manufacturer I'm talking about, guys, is coming through, and uh, they're pretty much dominating the whole military space now. Sig, the Sig MCX. This gun, guys, multiple different calibers, 300 blackout, 556. Uh, I am an absolute fan of. Now they've got different variations on the Sigum CX as well. They've got the Virtus, which is, or excuse me, the uh, the Rattler, which is the little tiny guy, five and a half inch barrel. I, I really want one. So if you guys got one, you know, just let me know. But I really want one because I think throwing one of my 30 cal cans on it and just going suppress with that guy would just be a whole lot of fun. Now they've come in and just taken the market by storm. The Sig MCX, the Virtus, the Rattler, all that stuff is just an awesome platform and they are working. And when I say Sig is coming through and it looks like they might be taking over a lot of military contracts, the United States military is open for a whole new uh, caliber to be the standard issue cartridge. 5.56 might be going away, guys, just throwing it out there. Uh, they're looking at a different six millimeter type cartridge, something that we haven't seen before. And also on top of that, SIG now looks like they've got the Army contract to replace the ACOG. So now they're introducing a one to six LPVO from what I understand. All of this is pretty exciting if you ask me. Now me as a Marine Reservist, I ain't never seen any of this stuff, but it's really fun to talk about, especially if SHOT Show 2022 is still happening and maybe we can actually see some of these products. For those of you that don't know, SHOT Show 21 ain't, ain't happening, so sad face. But anyway, I've had an opportunity to shoot the SIG MCX when we gave one away in its pistol form, chambered in 5.56, I think it was, it was a while ago. and. Yeah, here's that footage. All right, guys, so got kind of a fun drill set up here. It's gonna be short and simple. I've got a target set up about 75 feet down range, two targets. Target one, moving and engaging. Target two, run, reload, and uh, engage again until I'm out. So let's go ahead and give it a shot here. Ryan's got the shot timer. Ryan, I'm ready for it, man. All right. I think I could have done a little better. Let's take a look at the targets. Guys, so after taking a look at the shot timer, total time was about 11 seconds with a little bit of movement. That's not too bad. First uh, first target you see right here, put this guy over here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five on my first target while moving at about 75 feet and closing. I'm okay with that. All my shots are on target, I'm happy with it. And then of course when I'm like 15 feet away, is whenever I start pulling them, <laughs> so I start shooting a little bit faster. So I've got one low here, two, three, four, five, it looks like six there. And uh, yeah, of course, messed up on the reload while running, you know, that's just how it goes. But overall, this thing is sweet. I used my own mags because I knew I'd be throwing them around. So that's what you see here, but it does come with one standard black 30 round P mag. And man, I really love the way this thing feels. The recoil impulse on it, on that uh, the uh, gas operator, the piston operated system is just, it's light. You know, you can, even for a pistol, it is really nicely done. SIG did a great job on the MCX that you see right here, all right? So, yeah, that thing is just a lot of fun. Now there's plenty of other manufacturers out there as well that I haven't hit on that definitely produce some expensive firearms. Uh, one of which could be Colt. Uh, this is my Colt LE6920 M4, you know, and Back in the day, they were not over a thousand dollars, but recently with how things have been and also too, the, you know, depending on the current climate of things, prices can fluctuate all over the place. I mean, the demand right now, as you guys know, is super high in accessories, in ammunition especially, and in firearms. So if you can find any of this stuff, good job. Uh, but also too, another one I want to talk about is FN. FN's been around for a long time, manufacturing a lot of the firearms that we currently know in the United States Armed Forces that SIG might be trying to beat out. So we'll see how that goes. I want to hear you guys' thoughts and opinions on SIG dominating the military market. And also too, is there another manufacturer I left out over here? I mean, we got the holy grail of knights, right? And we've talked about SIG. We've talked about LWRCI and some of their piston-driven systems. Daniel Defense, <laughs> love and also BCM. So I want to hear from you guys. 
who did I leave out? Who did we leave out? Who do you think deserves to be in the top five over here, right? And I wanna hear for you guys, number one. Number one for me, don't get me wrong, I love my Daniel Defense, but I really want a SIG MCX, and maybe it's, maybe maybe because it's what something I don't have, that's why it's listed so high at the list, but SIG MCX number one, all right? All right, I'm gonna leave it off there, guys. Hey, check out our current giveaway. All right, never know what it might be. Could be this M4, could be this Knights, could be another FN Scar, could be that Maxim PDX. I don't know. So check out whatever our giveaway might be, depending on when you are watching this video, whether it be in the future or current, uh, we've got something pretty sweet going on. So head on over to classicfirearms.com, hit the top banner that says win this, enter now, and it'll take you to a webpage that shows you all the different links. And make sure you watch the unveil video of whatever it is that we're giving away, because well, we might have a code word in there for you to get you some extra entries. All right. God bless you guys. I'll see you down in the comment section, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.